Hey there, welcome back to A Tale of Three Cabins. I'm just uh, cleaning up my ATV a little bit. I'm putting it up for sale. I don't really get the use out of it I used to anymore now that I got JD. JD pretty much can uh, replace everything I did around here, except uh, at a high speed, I guess. But uh, I had a snowplow on this ATV and uh, JD's got a snowplow and um, my ATV is just gonna be sitting. So I figured best to put up for sale and I could probably buy some more attachments for it. So speaking of attachments, I just wanna go over some of the ones that I bought when I bought the tractor. Uh, maybe some of the mistakes I might have made when I bought the tractor. Okay, so today I'm just going to discuss the Titan clamp-on forks. I got these forks because um, they were inexpensive. I got them off of eBay. They had a uh, promotion going on with a percentage off. And I got them for around $96. They're rated for 1,500 pounds. And I knew I was going to be moving attachments around and some other stuff around the yard. They're pretty simple to install. This is a stabilizer here that keeps the forks from separating um, during uh, certain tasks that you're doing. So there is a little pocket on the top of them that you could put some 2x4s in um, to keep materials from falling back on you. And then um, there's a couple little notches in the front with those pockets that you could actually attach chains to. So the loader is rated for a certain amount of pounds, but that kind of goes out the window because the forks stick out and the further um, your weight load is out away from the bucket, um, the less your lift capacity is going to be. There's no way my 1025R is going to outlift the capacity of these forks. I do use them quite a bit and I thought I would show you some of the applications, some of my successes and some of my failures. So the Frontier Brush Cutter, 48 inches for my 1025R, weighs about 530 pounds. My plan is to put the forks uh, underneath the pins for the hitch. And then at the end of the forks, wrap a chain around it and connect that chain to the back wheel and see if I can lift this up high enough to get onto my trailer.
I'm off the ground. Behind me is the fence for my garden. Normally I can pull in and out of there pretty easy, but the size of the brush cutter and with the forks being clamped onto the bucket does not allow me to make the turn to get into the driveway. Um, I tried maneuvering a couple different times and it just wouldn't work. Now if I had regular forks that were attached to the quick connect, it gave me about an extra two feet because the bucket would not be attached of more space and I probably could have got out okay. I really only needed about six more inches so I could clear the corner of my shed, but it just wasn't going to work. The second thing would be I can only lift it about eight inches. That's as high as I could go. I revved up the idle and I needed to go, you know, at least two feet to get on my trailer. So I still wouldn't have been able to load it even if I got it out of there. This is some flooring from Home Depot. They loaded it lengthways and the flooring is about four feet long. There's 15 boxes. Each box weighs approximately 42 pounds plus the pallet. So we're looking at around 630 pounds. I think if they would have rotated the pallet 90 degrees and put it in the bed so it could be closer to the forks, I think I might have got this one. I ended up pulling back the plastic and taking off three boxes, lightening up the load enough that I could maneuver it and turn it sideways, and then I was able to get it to our front door. So here's some other applications that I use these forks for. I would love to have the quick attach forks, and maybe someday I will, depending on how my budget is. But for now, these are going to do okay for things I need to do. I know it has its limitations, but um, they still come in handy, and I uh, use them quite a bit. 